Good morning. I know that many of you, I'm going to venture to say most of you know about the term vinyasa because you've heard it with reference to a style of yoga that is widely practiced in America. We cannot underestimate the detrimental effects that co-opting concepts from other cultures and restructuring them in a way that suits our personal needs has on the original culture. And on the very nature of what we happen to be co-opting. So I do take issue with a style of yoga that has been derived from a concept of yoga because it minimizes the potency. It diminishes the potency of the original teachings. So the word vinyasa refers to intelligent arrangement. There is an intelligence behind how we are arranging what we are arranging. So I'm going to talk about this today in reference to the study of yoga sutras of Patanjali, the defining text on yoga. Although we can talk about it on anything, we can talk about the vinyasa of getting to work on time. We can talk about the vinyasa of cooking eggplant parmigiana. We can talk about the vinyasa of establishing a business. There are many ways that we can talk about this. What is in common is that there is an intelligence behind how we do this so that there is efficiency, so that we are not haphazardly moving through situations because when we haphazardly move through situations, the result is not favorable. So how do we learn yoga sutras in the ancient context and in the context of the lineage that I learn and teach in, that is the lineage of Sri T. Krishnamacharya and T. K. V. Desi Kachar. We learn to chant the text first. And if not first, at least concurrently as we are learning the text. So there is, this is just a, a, a figment of imagination that yoga, doing yoga means going to a, a group class and, and taking some classes. This is not yoga. If you're learning yoga, you have to study the texts. That is where yoga comes from. It comes from a deeply profound experience born from long-term uninterrupted study with the teacher. So this text, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, must be chanted and learned. And at Yoga Foundation, this is actually how we teach the text. And I have an incredible opportunity that is upcoming. And this opportunity is available to anyone who has either studied with my studied chanting with myself, taken our downloadable course, which I will make sure is at the link in the bio, who has studied with a colleague of mine in this lineage, chanting. Okay, so that's who this course is for. Um, that is rather what the prerequisite of this course is. You have to have some chanting experience. And once you have that, 
you can take the course. We're starting at the very beginning of Samadhi Padaha. So that means if you want to learn to chant the whole text in the most economic way, possibly not the quickest way, but the most economic way, this is your time to begin. We will start with Sutra number one in the first chapter and the group will move through the entire four chapters of the text over a period of time. So I advocate for that. And if you're wondering how in the world when I'm teaching, let's say Sutra 249, and I know that when Patanjali is talking about the breath, he is talking about the unconscious breath, the agitated breathing pattern. How do I know that? Well, because I know that the same words he's using, he used in 131 to refer to unconscious, agitated breathing patterns. That's how I know. And so you too can know this. I am not incredibly intelligent. I do not have a photographic memory, but I put in the time, I put in the study. Uh, I'm not skipping any steps. It's taking a long time and it's supporting my transformation and yours or others. Uh, so please consider if you are a sincere student of yoga, or if you want to be, and you've gone through the yoga therapy process, or you're going through the yoga therapy process, that's an incredible start. But if you want to really truly be on the path of yoga, it's not possible without knowing what it is, how it defines itself, what are the results of yoga, Otherwise, what's happening in our minds and our worlds? What are the obstacles that we'll face on the way? How do we overcome them? What are the obstacles that we face in our minds? Need they be obstacles? How do we alleviate our suffering? Specifically, what are the steps that we can take so that we can reach deeper states of clarity, etc.? Do it. Study yoga. It will support your well-being and your future selves' well-being. Thank you for listening.